I'm going to uh, preach on a scripture tonight that when I happened to come across that I thought, what's that scripture doing in that spot? Uh, it's over in Isaiah 28. I want to read the verse 20 verses. And my thought is going to be, is the bed is too short and the covers are too narrow. Uh, I want to read it. It's something, God, God knows what he's doing when he puts this thing together. And as we look at it, it's judgment, and he really gets their attention when he throws this verse in there for them to wake up and see. Have you ever been in a bed that's too short? Uh, yeah, you've got to be the first to say amen, as big as you are. Uh, too short or the covers are too narrow? Remember when I first got married, Paula and I would fight over the covers? She usually won, I don't know how, but uh, you know, the covers are too narrow, the, the bed is too short, it's miserable. So let me, uh, let me start in verse one, and I'm gonna read a little more than normal, but I, I, I wanna read it to kinda show you what, what they're getting at right here. Isaiah 20, verse one, 28 and verse one. It says, woe, woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is fading flowers, which are on the head of the, of the fat valley of them that are overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm as a flood of mighty water overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride and the drunkards of Ephraim shall be trodden under feet. And the glorious beauty which is on the head of the fat valley shall be a fading flower and as a mighty fruit before the summer, which when he has looked upon it, seeth while it is yet in his hand, he eateth it up. And that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and as a, a demon of beauty unto the residue of the, of the people." And for a spirit of judgment to him that setteth in judgment, and for strength to, to them that turn the, the battle to the, to the gate. But they also have erred as have erred through, through wine, through the strong drink, are, are out of the way. The priests and the prophets have erred through strong drink. They are, they are, they are hot, swallowed up of, they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through the strong drink. They err in wisdom and vision. They, they stumble in judgment. For the tables, now here's, listen to this verse. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. You, you get the idea, the priests, the prophets, are all turned to wine and dr strong drink. They're called, they're called, they're saying they're drunkards. Uh, have, have you ever been around somebody that's been drunk? <laughs> if you wanna have a good time, just, just have one come to the house. I, I don't even want them to my house anymore. But uh, 
I've got an uncle that's a deacon in a church, but I remember on a Christmas way back there that he come to, to visit his mom, his sister, which is my mom. And when he got ready to leave, I don't know why dad and mom even let him go, but they got in the car and drove home. But before he got in the car, mom told him, said, here, uh, D, take this, uh, take this piece of, of, of uh, fruitcake and eat it. And he said, I don't have time. I, I'm not in the mood for it. And he, that's when you wore tight jeans, tight, you know, they looked like you had to grease your leg to get them on. He had on a pair of tight jeans and he put it in his, in his pants pocket. I don't know how he got it down in his pants pocket, but, but drunks will do some of the craziest things. And here, as we look at this, we can see the prophets and we can see the priests and we can see for all tables are full of vomit and drunken and filthiness, so, so there is no place clean. Said, whom shall, shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Then that, them that are, are weaned like from the milk and drawn from the breast, for precept shall be upon precept, Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, for with stumbling lips, stammering lips, and, and another tongue will he speak to the people, to whom he said, there, this is the rest wherewith ye shall, ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto their, upon them, precept, upon them, precept, upon precept, precept, upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and they, that they might go and fall forward and be, and be broken and snared and taken. There's a scripture over in Psalm, over in Psalms, I think it's 107, it just come to my mind. It said that the man at one time, this group said they were like uh, talking about the uh, uh, unsaved, that they are like a drunk man swaying to and fro. Uh, you, you see a lot of people out there that don't walk a straight line and they're like a drunk man. They, they wave, they just move to and fro because they can't walk a straight line. In verse 14, uh, wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scoreful men that rule this people uh, which, are in Jeru which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, with hell, are, are, we, uh, uh, are we at agreement when the overflowing scour scourge shall pass through, it shall not come upon us, for we, uh, for we have made lies our, our refuge, and under falsehood shall we hide ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, uh, a, for, uh, for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the palm, to the palmet. He said that, uh, and, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. And uh, just let me go to verse 20. I think you get the, the idea in verse number 28. It said, for the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. And it said, and the covers narrower than he can wrap himself in it. Father, we pray now that, Lord, that you'll give us this message. We thank you, Lord, for putting it on our mind. We thank you, Lord, for helping us with it. We pray right now, Lord, that your will be done. We pray, Lord, if there's one among us that don't know you, if there's one among us as a Christian that's in the valley, Lord, discouraged, we pray right now, Lord, that you'll encourage them and help them come to the altar, and, Lord, that we can pray for them and we can each one encourage each other. 
Go with us now, we pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Did you get the idea of what they were saying right there? Filthiness, drunkards, vomiting, filthy, it's, it's there. And as I looked at this, the first thing to come to mind, I jotted down some notes on it. Let me read my notes, and then I want to get into my message. It said, they are people who like to mock God and to scoff at the warning of God. These are people who seek to find rest in philosophies and vain deceit. These are people who seek to find rest in religion. These are people who are seeking rest in liquor and, to, uh, and in pleasure. These are people who are seeking rest in prosperity. But of all these things, it's most, it's, it must be said that the bed is too short and the covers are too narrow. You cannot find real rest in these things. You'll never find peace in pleasure. They'll only, there's only one real place on, on the earth that you can find this real peace and it's in Jesus Christ. The, the precious cornerstone is Jesus and that's what he's just saying here uh, in verse 16. He said, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a cornerstone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not uh, shall not make haste. And as we look at this, through all of this, we can see Jesus as he's talking about the foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation is what Jesus Christ is and needs to be in our life. He is a sure cornerstone. He is the rock of ages. As a song that was sung this morning, we can be anchored in him and we can live forever and God's will will be done. But as we look at this, the world out there has got you all kinds of things that you can choose from. If you want to be a cow, go to India and join their religion and, and you can be a cow. I, I went past the pastor the other day and them old cows were just laying out there so peaceful and uh, they were all chewing their cod I, I cut. I told Paula, I said Boy, wouldn't it be nice to be a cow and uh, she said no, not really and, and, and as I thought you know there's people today that says uh, if you get baptized when you're a baby that heavens is going to be your home. That uh, There's others that says out there that as long as you live a good life and pay your tithes and attend church uh, heaven's going to be your home. Now we know that's not right. If it was, why did they put in the middle of this, not only about the bed and the covers, but that they, they that saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. We can have heaven someday by believing in the Lord and believing in God and knowing that there's only one way to get there and that's through Jesus Christ. Now, have you ever looked at this passage? Has, any, has anybody else ever read this? Surely you have. And, and did you ever think about it? The first time I thought about it, I thought, why in the world was that passage put there where it's at? And the more I thought and the more I prayed, it just kind of showed me what God is telling me. Uh, it's no other way but through Jesus. There is a church out there that is insufficient. There is a religion out there that is insufficient and it won't get us to heaven and our ways will, uh, the ways of the world will not get us there. In chapter 18 of the book of Luke, uh, starting in verse number uh, uh, 18, I think it is, it's talking about the uh, the rich young ruler that thought that, you know, he thought I'm okay, everything's fine, but let me read through some of this. And it said in verse 18 of Luke 18, he said, uh, and a certain ruler asked him saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And don't we hear people asking 
seeing that all the time. I was in home missions. Uh, I, I remember Carly was too, and so was brother, uh, uh, brother, 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 brother right there. Uh, uh, we were in home missions, and we would knock on doors. And when I first started, I, I, I would ask him, are you saved? And, and the, some of these people, the older women especially, that went to the Lutheran church and the other churches, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, preacher, uh, I got saved on the emergency room table. Uh, I got saved on the surgery table. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm saying no, I didn't ask that. Do you have a personal relationship with God? Do you know him as Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Well, I don't need that. I'm saved. I'm okay. No, we do need that. And if we haven't got him, we are not saved. And hell will be our home. And we will live forever there. It's just not going to be a, 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 a dream. It's just not going to be a, a few days. It's just not going to be a hundred years. Uh, it's going to be eternity that they will be spending in hell because they're trusting in a pleasure. They're trusting in a drunkard. Uh, uh, they're trusting in their needs. Uh, they're depending, depending upon that cow uh, uh, that whenever they come back, they're going to be as a cow. Uh, uh, they're depending upon their baptism. Uh, uh, brother, our baptism isn't going to get us anywhere but to hell. We need to be saved and then be baptized uh, and then we can make it into heaven and I thank God for that but as, a, as we see here this young rich ruler he come and look what he's saying here that, that he's a saying in verse number uh, 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 18 uh, good master what must I do to, eternal, to inherit eternal life Jesus said unto them why caught thou me good in verse 21 then look here what he said uh, and he said all this uh, all these shall have I kept from my youth up and what he's just saying uh, uh, why caught me thou good uh, he said this and uh, none is good save one uh, he said that this is what the, uh, what he has to do thou knoweth the commandments uh, uh, do not commit adultery do not kill do not steal do not bear false witness uh, honor thy father and thy mother and he said all of this have I done from my youth up uh, and now Jesus heard these things uh, he said yet lacketh thou one thing, sell all that thou had, distribute to the poor and thou shalt have treasures in heaven. Uh, uh, many thinks that their prosperity is going to get them to heaven. Uh, our prosperity isn't going to get us to heaven. Brother, if that's what we depended on, I wouldn't be making it. Would your money get you there? I don't have enough money to get me to heaven. But I know I can trust in Jesus and I can be the poorest brother that ever put on a pair of pants and put a Bible underneath my arm and walk in the pulpit and I can have heaven there one of these days. But uh, this guy said, I've done all of that from my youth up. And Jesus said, go sell what you've got and you can have your part. You can be in heaven. But he did not in verse, uh, uh, find out where I'm at here in verse 26. Uh, and, and they that heard it said, who then can be saved? And he he said the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. We can be saved, any of us, when we come with a willing heart and we believe with everything we've got and we confess our sin and we ask Jesus into our heart. I don't care who you are, where you are, what, what you are, what color you are, what size you are. I don't care what nationality you are. I don't even care how many times you've been married and how many drugs you take uh, and how many beers you drink. Uh, I don't care anything about that. Jesus said I'll save you if you only come. Amen. He was plain. But yet he put these verses in here that might show us there is judgment for those that are not. There's going to be a time in their life that they're going to have to stand before God and then it's going to be you making the wrong choice if you have not got right with God. Let me show you a few scriptures here that kind of go along with uh, this idea that we're not living the right life. Look what he says in Matthew 7 and 
and verse uh, 21 or somewhere about that neighborhood, Matthew chapter 7. He's uh, talking here about the, the things that we need to be doing to get to heaven. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 21, and he's talking here about false profession. Uh, works are insufficient. And, and let me read it. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. It said, Many will say, to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and, and in thy da name done many wonderful works, uh, uh, and then will I, prof uh, will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. They was not right with God, they did not do what they were supposed to do, and he said, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from God. I've had people to say, you mean a God that's as loving as our God is supposed to be? He's going to send us to hell. My comeback to you is God never sent you to hell. God sent his son to die for wretched sinners like us, to, to shed his blood, to endure the cross, go through death, go through the, uh, the tomb and come out on the other side. God has made it possible for us to be saved. The devil will make make you think God sent you to hell. You, you, God didn't do it. We did it to ourselves. If we die and go to hell, we made that decision ourselves. You know, nobody else. You know, I made a decision one time to marry Paula. She said yes. Her family and all probably thought, what in the world are you getting into? Roy Roach? Oh, my. One of her friends up in, uh, was in the Air Force up in North or South Dakota sent uh, their, their dad, his, her dad and mom was at our wedding and I sent word, this, the dad and mom sent word to, to North Dakota or whatever it was, Air Force Base up there that uh, we don't know what Paula got into but uh, we feel sorry for her. She didn't get very much. <laughs> A lot of people thought that. But, you know, I started preaching, and he called me his favorite preacher. So, listen, God knows what he's doing. We put our trust in God. I don't care what we've done. I don't care what's going on. Uh, look, another verse here I've got, if I can find it here real quick. I, a couple another, just to go along with this right here, would be over in uh, uh, Galatians uh, uh, 2 and verse number 6. And then I want to go to Ephesians, uh, in Galatians 2 and verse number 6. Look what he says here in this verse. 2 and uh, let's go to 16. 2 and 16 of Galatians. It said, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. And he said, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We cannot get to heaven by the works of the law. We've got to go to heaven through Jesus Christ. Look at over in Ephesians 2 and, and verse number 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, verse number 8 and 9. Look what he says over here in this verse of books of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. He said, for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourself it is a gift of God, not not of works, lest any man should boast. We are not saved by works. We're not saved by who we are or, or by knowing somebody. You can go to the book of uh, uh, Titus chapter 1 and verse 16 and get some more on that. But I want to look at what, what a sufficient religion might be. There is a, a sufficient religion out there. And as I thought about that, I began to think about people like Daniel uh, that prayed that Daniel went through the lion's den. God gave him the victory. I started thinking about the Hebrew boys, uh, how that they were put, uh, uh, they, that Daniel was put in the, in the fiery furnace. The Hebrew boys was put in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the fiery furnace and Daniel was put in the, in the lion's den. Did I get 
get that right that time. And as we look at these guys, they, they all four of them come out victorious. God was there with them. God was there to help them. I thought about Abraham. They, he tried to help God whenever Ishmael was born. It wasn't, it wasn't God's will, but here he is. Uh, he tried to help God, but yet Abraham uh, repented of all of his sins and Abraham made it to heaven. I started thinking about some of these others that uh, uh, Hezekiah, uh, God sent word that he was going to die uh, in, what was it, three three weeks or three, of whatever it was. It's been a while since I read it. But he, he prayed and uh, God sent word to him and told him he was going to extend his life and God did. How many do we know that's lived the life that is faithful to God? And I'm looking at a whole bunch of you here tonight that's lived your life faithful to God and I know if we walk in your steps and do as you do we're all going to go to heaven together amen that's that's it that's it but yet the world tells us the world loves to tear down what we got I used to work public work. I know what they do. I know how they do it. I, uh, I, I, uh, my brother, my little brother was one that said, I'm as good as the deacons is over at that church where you pastor. I don't need to come to church. I finally told him, Raj, uh, I don't care what you believe. I don't care what's going on. You know better than that. I was raised in the same house you was raised in. You can say that all you want, but you do me one favor. You get yourself saved. Saved, and then you show those deacons over there that you think they're not living right. You show them how to live if that's what you think. He wouldn't. He got saved a few weeks before he got, before he got uh, died. And I thank God he made it. But, but too many times we're, we're not doing what God wants us to do because we're watching other people. And for that we hurt there's only one way to get to heaven. Let me, let, me, let me go through a couple more verses here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 21. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. I told you some time ago to carry a piece of paper around with you and write all these down. And I don't use bookmarkers. I, do, I can't keep, they keep getting away. So uh, first, uh, 2 second, second Corinthians 5 and verse number 21. He said, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He has made us to be what he wants us to be. He had no sin. He knew no sin. He took our sin to Calvary. Look what he says over, over in First, um, uh, First Peter 1, 18 and 19. Over here at another time, First Peter 1, 18 and 19. Look what he says here in this verse, as if I can get my thumbs going here fast enough. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19 and he's just saying this where, where for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from vain conversation received by tradition from your father. Other words you were not saved with precious gold and silver. You were not saved because of the traditions that's been carrying on. He said but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blood and without spot. I thank God today we're saved through Jesus Christ. Sometimes the bed may be too short too, and the cover's too narrow, but if we get down on our knees and pray, God will help us to make it to heaven. A couple more scriptures. There's only one way we can get there today. There's a lot of false religions out there through the years at different times, I've taken five or six of our, of our false religions that we hear around our communities, and I've had Bible studies over those. But it's been a while. I probably give all of my books to Tim. Whenever I was thought that I was retired, I gave him all of my books. But uh, look, he, we all know what John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
Look what he says over in the book of Galatians 1 and verse 8 and 9. Galatians 1 and verse 8 and 9. Look here uh, what he's just saying here. If I can get my fingers going again that, that I can look at this. If Galatians 1 verse 8 and 9. And look here what he says here. He said, but, but, through, but though we were an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which, is, which ye have, been, have preached unto you, let him be accursed. But as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that with that ye have received, let him be accursed. God said that two times. Don't you think he could have said it once? But I think he said it the second time, verse to verse, to get our attention, I need to do it that way. No other way is going to get it. Occasionally my dad would say, son, I've told you twice to pick up them shoes. They won't be a third. I knew it was time to pick up those shoes. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that, that uh, ye have received, let him be accursed. It's twice. He said the same scripture. We need to realize tonight Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one. The, pre the priests and the prophets may be drunk, but thank God our high priest is sober. He's there for us. He's made us a home. And he's got something there for us one of these days. Aren't you glad? Father, we thank you for this message. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for giving us these words. We thank you, Lord, for the, the message, Lord, and the scripture that you've allowed us to preach. Lord, speak to our hearts tonight. Let us see that where he put this right in the middle of this scripture, that the judgment that will be put upon those tonight that don't know you, that the scripture that the judgment someday's coming, and he's put it right there between the middle of this, ver of this chapter. Help us to see tonight, Lord, that you're there. And, Lord, you love us. Lord, you care for us. And, Lord, you can save us if we'll only come and ask you into our life. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. <laughs>